Meow. So, as always, starting with the head here. Just getting that swing up to those ears. And this lovely Maine Coon kitty. What I really want to emphasize here is the different positions of the ears. You know, it just gives the drawing lots of character. And of course, that's just among other things too. Really paying attention to rhythm in the drawing here. Notice I've got a lot of swoops that kind of swoop the same way, I guess, for lack of better terminology. Just getting a feel for that nice swoop up there. See that nice swing I got there? And it's very similar to the swing under the chin, too. Find some spots for paws. That's that other swoop that I was talking about a minute ago. There's another swoop. See, my swoops are all kind of matching in together to add to the rhythm in the drawing. I'm just getting the parts for the snout in. I like to get a real feel of the muscular structure of the cat's face, and I find I get more of a 3D look that way if I, if I pay attention to that. And just getting that eye line in there, paying attention to the curvature of the head. So the eyes feel like they kind of fit around the curvature of the head like they should. It's my eye pocket there. I only recently started really, really paying extra attention to that eye pocket. See, I'm creating a pocket where the eyes are going to go. And it'll be divided into two eye pockets pretty soon here. You'll notice I pay a lot of time kind of feeling my way around before I, when I, and not making marks right away. I want to think about each stroke. Get that paw in there. I hope you've been enjoying my videos and I do hope you join my Facebook group, uh, Cat Drawing Water cat drawing and watercolor art workshop on Facebook. It's for people that really want to draw cats and want some help with that and want to be part of a community. And you will find the link for that in the description of this video. I'm liking it so far. I like my structure, just the shapes, mapping out the shapes, not worrying about any fine detail at this stage. I'm not really sure I worry about fine detail ever. It's more about the bigger picture. But details have their place. There's where I start forming the two separate eye pockets. Those little slots where I'm just going to plunk the eyes into. Getting a feel for where that nose is going to be, that angle coming down from the eyes. I'm fitting that little nose in there. Kitty noses are so cute. It's 
pay particular attention to how I shape those eyes. Kind of mucked up that line, but now ah, the bit of extra ink adds some movement to the drawing. I'm really helping form the shape of the eye sockets as I shape the eyes to make the cat's facial structure structure look more convincing. It's just all part of thinking about drawing as sculpting. You're creating the look of a 3D subject on a 2D surface. Some pupils in there, it brings the eyes to life a little, hey? So you've got that same swoop up the top of the head too. Just down from the top of the head, you see that swoop between the ears and then moving down the cat, you'll see that same swoop um, kind of repeated on the way down for lots of extra rhythm in the drawing. May not be exact, but it has the same feel to it. Tabby marks can add so much expression to, and they can also help shape the face. They really are contour lines that you are uh, tracing the contour of the face with. So making sure they go around the curvature of the head. Just like the eye lines. Just adding a bit of tabby lines in here too, and they're also helping shape that arm too. So notice they go now around the, the roundness of the arm. I'm just getting some quick lines in there to, to more readily define those, those cute little paws. Everything about cats is cute. Just kind of fading the, the cat's body off into the background there. And I didn't choose the best paper for this drawing. I used a really bright uh, letter paper because I thought it would really, uh, the camera would really pick up the drawing better and it, I, I thought it might help show better. Um, but what I found too is it's really bright, but it's also very slippery. So it was really hard to control my pen, um, especially when I was filling in those eyes, the, the pupils, you know, because it's kind of crucial to have sharp lines around them. So I live and learn. I think I've got a better paper I can use from now on. It will hopefully be bright enough for you to see it well, but not be a slippery surface. It's one thing to draw, it's another thing to do it on camera for uh, then make sure that other people can see it well. I actually love my, my pencil drawings like this so much, my graphite pencil drawings so much. 
Um, but the problem is I do them so light that if I did a video of them, it would be very hard for you to see. So I do it in pen. And pen is great too. And this is just a cheap ballpoint pen. Um, great pen for lots of practice because expensive artist pens, um, you don't want to use them for when you're using a lot of ink and, and practicing. Just adding a bit of expression by exaggerating exaggerating the angle of the of the tops of the eyes. And those little lines under the where that white is under the eyes add lots of character too. Choose your lines wisely. Um, think about what's important, what you really see in the drawing, and work with your own style. You'll find it and you can never say I've totally found my style. It's always evolving. So just let yourself grow with your art. I like to squeak in a little smile. Our cats mean everything to us, don't they? And I just want to capture that character of that beautiful soul. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss a video. really defining things now. See now I'm kind of showing you my swoops. The swoops I talked about. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.